Hey everyone, it's Zach and Gus. We're back from GreatDaneCare.com. As you probably guessed from our silly introduction as well as our lovely outfits, today we're here to talk to you about Great Danes and baths. Now if you've watched any Great Dane compilation of videos on the internet, I can guarantee that you've seen some really funny ones of Great Danes struggling and fighting with their owners to escape or avoid getting a bath. So with that in mind, our goal for today is just to cover some tips and tricks to make the bathing process simpler, so that way not only is your Great Dane clean, uh, but it doesn't feel like it's World War III trying to get them in and out of bathtubs or go through the bathing process there. Now, if you're brand new to this video, we're glad to have you here. Now, this channel is entirely about taking care of Great Danes and different tips and tricks for working with them. And if you wanna make sure to not miss any future updates, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to our channel now, as well as give this video a like. Make sure to also stick around until the end because we've got a very special surprise that I think everyone will really love. Now with that, let's jump in and talk about some of the best tips and tricks for giving our Great Dane a bath. Now when it comes to these giant babies and getting them used to baths, one of the first places to really start out with is really no different from any other type of training or exposure to other settings. And that's just to simply get them used to getting in and out of the bathtub or the area that you will be giving them the different cleaning so that way they just get simply used to that process. Uh, having Gus learn to jump in and out of our big bathtub uh, in itself was something that she had to get used to before we started introducing the process of you know, soaking her down and going through the actual cleaning itself. Now, also like any other type of training, you can use different treats, you can use affection as different ways to kind of incentivize them to understand that as they get in the tub, they get a treat or they get pets and they get hugs. And it really turns an event that they might be a little bit scared about into a much more positive interaction. So that way as you kind of practice this a couple times throughout the course of the week, that they will be soon readily jumping into that bathtub or going to that area where they'll actually be getting the bath itself. Now, once you've created that positive association with going to that place, of course, the next step is to then introduce the elements of the bath itself. Uh, so some Great Danes might be scared of just the sound of running water. So once again, once they're used to that area, you could just simply practice turning the water on and off so that way they can just get used to hearing the sound of it running. Uh, once again, using treats, using attention, so that way just to really relax them and make them calm. Uh, hopefully in a state like us is right now where she's practically asleep, uh, just because she's so relaxed with the environment there. All right, so once you've got them calm and relaxed in that environment, used to the sound of water running, the next key thing to also keep in mind that I think a lot of Great Dane owners make the mistake on is just simply the temperature of the water you're using. Uh, just like you wouldn't want to get into a bath or a shower that's freezing cold or you know burning hot you know your great dane is very similar they have very short fur uh, which provides them little insulation to cold water and also a little protection from burning hot water uh, so as long as the water source allows uh, try to use a very you know comfortable warm temperature of water uh, so that way it's very comfortable for them to be in there and they also just don't get freezing cold throughout the course of the bath now on the flip side using water that's just burning hot can also cause other issues uh, in addition to actually scalding them, it uh, can also create issues for things like really dry skin. Uh, knowing that our Great Danes do have very sensitive skin, that's not something that you want to uh, exacerbate or make worse than it already might be. Now on the note of dry skin, another thing that we really recommend is to make sure you're using a, a gentle, dog-friendly shampoo. Uh, just because over time, shampoos that are harsher can actually cause their skin to dry out and once again lead to other skin issues as well. Now for the process of the bath itself, knowing that many Great Danes don't enjoy the process, I would plan to have everything that you need readily available to make the process that much faster. So have your dog shampoo, have extra towels to get them nice and dry afterwards. Uh, if you wanna use some kind of scrub brush like a Kong scrubber as a way to really massage the shampoo under the skin, have all of that ready on hand. So that way, as soon as they're in the tub, you can quickly wet down their coat and then begin massaging and coaxing that shampoo into their fur to really lather it up and then using the water to just simply rinse it out fully. Now, once you've got the shampoo completely removed from the fur, I'd recommend using your several towels that you have on hand to immediately drape over their body to start kind of soaking up that different water and drying them off. Uh, they will get cold very quickly, uh, so it is important to try to get them dried off uh, immediately after their bath. Uh, this will also help prevent them from shaking inside the house and you know whipping their tail onto the wall or just making a mess and going into the zoomies. Uh, so having several full-size towels immediately available to kind of towel them off and get the most of the moisture out of them is also really important. All right, now that, that of course describes the full kind of bath end-to-end -end process. Knowing that many dogs may not be quite as willing to kind of sit through that peacefully, you may need to uh, take things bit by bit and step by step to ensure that they're comfortable 
and not you know freaking out and just going crazy and running around the house. Uh, so at any point, if they feel like it's had too much, it's okay to just simply call the bath and end and move on, give them a reward and kind of end on a positive note instead of one where you're kind of frantically trying to corral them back into the tub and they're just scared they're trying to run away. Now with that, let's head up to the actual place where we give guys a bath so I can show you some additional uh, tricks that we use to make the process easier as well. All right, so as you can see, we've gone ahead and we moved into the bathroom. This is actually one of our secondary bathrooms that sits upstairs. And we primarily use this for two reasons. Uh, one being that it's not our primary bath, so that when we give Gus baths, if there's a mess or if there's water afterwards, it's not as big a deal to clean up. Um, and even though the space is a little bit tight, um, there is one really, really nice feature that makes baths easy as well. Let me show it to you right now. Now, these little removable hoses that you can easily get and install anywhere make it incredibly easy to kind of reach all over the place and easily wash the shampoo off your dog or also just initially get their fur wet before you begin massaging it in. Uh, so even though the space is a little bit tight, uh, the fact that it's not our main bathroom, so we don't have to worry about keeping it quite as clean and this little removable hose make it our choice where we give Gus her baths. All right, so with that, the next thing I will go ahead and show you here, and she's very excited in the back corner, is to show you how we actually get Gus in the tub. Obviously, if your puppy is smaller and you can easily pick them up, yeah, this is a pretty simple process just to simply lift them and place them in the tub and then get them used to the process of hearing the water running and really get comfortable with that before you kind of start dousing them in the water or going through the bathing process. Now for larger Great Danes like our friend Gus over here that's waiting, it can, it, it can be a much more difficult process to try to force them into the tub. So the much better approach is to use a very simple training command that we've actually covered in a previous video as a way to tell them exactly where you want to go. Uh, and that is spelled out P-L-A-C-E. I'm not saying it because Gus is looking at me just waiting to come and jump in. Uh, but this is what you can use to teach them to say, here's where I want you to go and have them get into that. Now, if they're not comfortable with this process, obviously this is something you'll need to practice and reward them with treats and attention over time. Uh, but with that, rather than me keep talking, let's just show you what it looks like. All right, guys, come here. Go ahead and place. And place is the command, by the way. So you can see, as I said, place here. Gus is slowly maneuvering herself into position. So that way she's standing uh, nicely in the tub. Uh, of course, and at this point, <clears throat> I would turn on the water, get it to the right temperature, and then begin using the hose to really kind of soak down her body, obviously removing her leash or collar beforehand if it is in place still. Um, I can also use things like a little you know, pull out curtain here, um, or if you have a door that closes in the shower, you can use that to also help contain the mess. And we'll often also place different towels on the floor to uh, kind of capture water if she shakes her head or immediately after she steps out, if there's kind of water dripping everywhere, uh, that can really help to contain it as well. All right, so as you can see, while the space is a little tight for Gus, she's clearly very comfortable being in here. And part of that is just having practice it time and time again. Uh, obviously, the very first time that you take your great day into the bathtub, they may not be they may not be quite as comfortable, but that's okay. This means that it's something you need to practice and get them used to. And then over time, they will very quickly, just like all other grooming things for nail trimming and ear cleaning, they'll just simply get used to it. Uh, if you don't make a big deal out of it and you turn it into a positive experience through rewards and treats and affection, uh, they'll quickly get used to the process and be very comfortable with it going forward. All right, so with that, that wraps up our best tips for giving Great Danes baths. If you like these tips, we have a special surprise for you. Using the hundreds of questions that we received repeatedly from different visitors year over year to the website, we actually took the time to put all these questions together in one condensed and very simple and easy to read book called The Great Dane Puppy Handbook. It answers common questions for things like bathing as well as general Great Dane care uh, that come up for almost every owner out there. Uh, so if you're interested, make sure to go ahead and take a look at the website for more information. That can be found at greatdanecare.com slash ebook. And to make it even better for you as visitors to the YouTube channel, you can also get 20% off using the code DANE20. With that, we hope you found this video helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, stay Danny, my friends.